Hi, and welcome to Mars Madness, The Physical Fallacies of the Martian, by Izzy and Adriel. Let's start with a image of the opening scene of The Martian. Uh, the crew aboard the Hermes on the planet of Mars is threatened by a huge dust storm that threatens to topple their ship over, rendering them stranded on this planet, and their biggest issue is that they have to leave right away. However, was this really a cause for concern? Did they really have to leave? I mean, I know Mars is hellish in a million ways, but I don't think windstorms are one of them with the pressure and the gravity. Let's look at the facts. The theories used for this analysis are with uh, Newton's second law, which is just force equals mass times acceleration, drag for air resistance, the surface area for what the air is resisting against, gravity, and torque. So the given values were um, estimated off of the modern rocket equivalents that we have, the biggest being the Falcon 9, which is about 549,000 kilograms and 70 meters tall. However, NASA estimates that the rocket Hermes in the movie was about 98 meters tall and 2,608,000 kilograms. The Drag coefficient is less than half. The Mars surface gravity is 3.71 meters per second squared. The air density is about 0.02 kilograms meters per meter cubed. And the highest wind velocities recorded on Mars were about 30 meters per second according to NASA. Here is the diagram. On the right you'll see the diagram for torque as the force of the wind pressing against the top of the rocket and the gravity holding the whole thing down against the pivot of the ground. And on the left you'll see the wind speeds hammering against the cylinder and the path of the curve around the rocket ship. For the calculations, we um, used estimates uh, of the maximum of the highest possible values that could be occur just for posterity. So the force of the wind would be a little bit over a thousand newtons and the force of gravity would be around almost 10 million. So the even alongside the longer end of the ship where the torque would push up against the 90 meter height and the torque keeping the rocket ship from falling over against the radius of the ship. And even with these numbers, the torque keeping the ship upright seems to greatly beat out the torque trying to bring it down. So to compare the values in the movie, the commander in the movie mentioned that the storm had a force of about 8,600 newtons and that the rocket could only handle 7,500 newtons before it started to tip over. However, the Martian atmosphere isn't as dense and the low gravity allows for dust storms to reach really high speeds. So the 8,600 newton speed is a lower estimate than what the Martian planet would offer to these astronauts and the ship is a behemoth so I don't think that they'd only be able to handle 7,500 newtons. And for the margins there, they're quite vast as the angles make it quite difficult to be able to dictate the distances of the rocket and the length of it. And there aren't any modern contemporary examples of a rocket that would take people to Mars just yet. Elon's working on it. However, this being the case, the force of the wind would not be able to take down the ship as significantly stronger than anything else the Martian atmosphere could hope to bring against it. In conclusion, Matt Damon didn't have to live on Mars and eat potatoes out of his friend's poop for about a year or two. He didn't have to struggle, he didn't have to be left alone for forever. I guess Mr. Science doesn't get to be any of those astronauts on that mission, 
as if they just sat down and thought about it, they wouldn't have to worry. But um, in real life, I guess, the Martian atmosphere is quite hellish. The planet is desolate with nothing left for us humans to be able to scavenge in order to survive, yet there are so many difficulties, even externally with the radiation of the sun and the lack of magnetic field to protect the peop any technology on it from solar flares. However, I don't think that wind and dust storms are going to cause an issue for any of the astronauts that will be heading there soon. And now I'll hand it over to Izzy. So our next statement of investigation is, is the space suit propulsion seen in the Martian scientifically accurate? Could the air escaping the hole in the astronaut suit actually propel him to safety? So basically what happens in the scene is the astronaut is trying to get back to his team after being stuck on Mars, but he's too far away from them. So he cuts a hole in the glove of his spacesuit and uses the air to propel him to his captain, which you see in the first picture. So these are our given values. The mass of the astronaut will be 86 kilograms which is based off the mass of Matt Damon, who plays the astronaut in The Martian. The mass of the spacesuit is 48.5 kilograms, according to NASA. And the air pressure in the suit will be 29,632 newtons per meter squared. According to NASA, spacesuits for the space shuttle era used 100% oxygen inside them. However, it should be noted that it is dangerous to use 100% oxygen because it is highly combustible. It is unlikely that the spacesuit in the movie was actually 100% oxygen, so we will use 29,632 newtons per meter squared as the lower limit for the pressure in the suit, and 101,300 newtons per meter squared, which is normal atmospheric pressure, to represent the upper limit. Now we'll look at the hole and the free body diagram. The hole, which you can see in the glove of the spacesuit, its area can be estimated to be about to be around one centimeter squared to four centimeter squared, which is one ten thousandth meter squared to four ten thousandths meter squared. The air escaping the hole produces a force thrust which propels the astronaut upwards. These are the formulas that we will use in the calculations. The first one is velocity equals distance over time. Second one is pressure equals force over area. Third one is force equals mass times acceleration. The fourth one is distance equals one half times the acceleration times time squared. The fifth one is Bernoulli's law. And the sixth one is flow rate equals volume over time, which equals area times velocity. Solving for theoretical acceleration. The lower limit uses a pressure of 29,632 newtons per meter squared and an area of the hole of 0.0001 meter squared. If we use these values in the pressure formula, we get a force of 2.963 newtons. If we use that force to solve for an acceleration, we get an acceleration of 0.022 meters per second squared. The upper limit uses a pressure of 101,300 newtons per meter squared and the area of the hole of 0.0004 meter squared. With these values, we get a force of 40.52 newtons. Using this force, we get an acceleration of 0.301 meters per second squared. Both of these accelerations are too small to be able to propel the astronaut. To find the astronaut's acceleration in the movie, we need a distance and a time. So we can use this scene to figure out a distance. In the first picture, the astronaut is below the opening in the space capsule. And in the second picture, the astronaut is above the opening in the space capsule. Which means that the astronaut must have traveled more than the length of his height. Matt Damon's height is 5 feet 10 inches or 1.778 meters. So we can estimate that the astronaut traveled around 3 meters. 
The astronaut travels the three meters from the last light in one to two seconds, according to the movie. So at the lower limit, with a time of one second, the astronaut has an acceleration of six meters per second squared. At the upper limit, with a time of two seconds, the astronaut has an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. The astronaut's acceleration in the movie ranges between these two values and is larger than theoretical acceleration, which ranges from 0.022 meters per second squared to 0.301 meters per second squared. So at this point, the spacesuit propulsion scene is not very scientifically accurate. We can also look at how reasonable the astronaut's acceleration in the movie is from a force perspective. So at the lower limit, with the acceleration being 1.5 meters per second squared, there is a force of 201.75 newtons, or about 45 pounds. And at the upper limit, with an acceleration of 6 meters per second squared, we have a force of 807 newtons, which is about 181 pounds. The acceleration in the movie is not reasonable in both of these cases. The air escaping from the small hole in the spacesuit would not be able to produce 45 or 181 pounds of force. Additionally, it is unlikely that the astronaut's arm would be able to sustain pushing up with 181 pounds. Another aspect of this scene is how fast will the spacesuit run out of air? So here we have a diagram of the spacesuit with the orange representing the human body and the blue area representing the air in between the body and the spacesuit. The red circle represents the hole and we will assume that the density of air just inside and just outside of the hole is the same. The blue cylinder represents the escaping air. Um, since the human body is mostly water, we can use the density of water, which is one kilogram per liter, as an approximation for the density of the human body. So the astronaut's 86 kilograms will be 86 liters. Also assuming that there is one to two inches of space between the astronaut's body and the suit, we will estimate that there is also 86 liters of air inside the suit. We can then use Bernoulli's law to determine the velocity of the escaping air, which is the equation underneath. Because the air does not have an initial velocity, there is no change in height, and there is no pressure outside of the hole, the second, third, fourth, and sixth terms in the equation become zero. So we're left with just the initial pressure equals one half times the density times velocity squared. To find the density of the air, we can set up a proportion. So we have normal density of air over the normal atmospheric pressure equals the density over the pressure inside the spacesuit. If we solve this, we get that the density is 0.358 kilograms per meter cubed. If we substitute this density into the equation with the initial pressure being 29,632 newtons per meter squared, we get that the velocity of the escaping air is 407 meters per second. Now we can use the flow rate to determine how long it will take for the spacesuit to run out of air. The flow rate is equal to the area of the cross section of where the substance is moving through times the velocity of the substance, which we get is 0 0.0407 meters cubed per second. Then we can use time, which equals the volume over the flow rate, to find out how long it takes. And we find out that the spacesuit would take about two seconds to lose all of its air. Thus, it is unlikely that the air escaping from the hole will be able to propel the astronaut like it did in the movie. In conclusion, it is difficult to accurately determine values used based off the film. As a result, there may be great disparities between theoretical calculations and calculations from the movie. Using averages of the theoretical accelerations and the movie's accelerations, there is a percent error of 22.2. We can see that films are often scientifically inaccurate. The spacesuit propulsion scene in The Martian was unrealistic in many ways. The escaping air would not be able to propel the astronaut as powerfully and for as long as it did in the movie. 
and the astronaut's body would not have been able to endure the amount of force the movie suggested.